Hey everyone, this is Greg Benz with an overview of how to create custom luminosity masks in Lumenzia. This is absolutely my favorite feature in Lumenzia, something I've been wanting to demonstrate for a very long time. Uh, so my apologies for not having done this a, a long time ago, but I absolutely love this. You can interactively select any tone or color in the image to the degree that you want. And that lets you create some very advanced luminosity masks to solve some very hard problems in a much easier way. In this case, we're gonna be going after this shadow of a tripod here. If we zoom in down at the base of the image here, we can see that this is a pretty nasty problem. So I'm just gonna highlight it here. Um, we have two different colors of lights mixing here. The overhead sky was a uh, light blue morning sky, and that's what you see in the shadow of the tripod, whereas everything else around was also being lit by a street lamp that was behind the camera and I. Now I moved out of frame for this shot to try and minimize the shadow, but of course the tripod and camera I couldn't take out, and so they're in the image. And that is a problem because as we look at this, these tiles are very detailed. There's a lot of seams on them, there's a lot of texture, and there's perspective moving from these large tiles in the foreground to much smaller tiles in the distance. So trying to come through here with a traditional tool like the healing brush or the clone stamp is going to be very, very time consuming. And I don't know that I could create a convincing result even if I spent hours trying to fix that. But thankfully, the difference between these two areas is just a matter of luminosity or brightness and the color. So if we can make a good mask of this tripod shadow, then we can fix it. The challenge is the standard luminosity mask isn't going to do that and that's where a custom luminosity mask is going to help us to select this guy and fix it. So I'm just gonna get rid of this little preview that I had here. And before we dive into the actual adjustment, let me show how to customize masks in Lumenzio just in general to present the, the concept and then we'll do the edit. So if I click on any of these buttons in the top part of the panel, the, the entire top of the panel here, these are basically just previews. Each one of these lets me pick a different luminosity mask and just simply visualize what it's gonna do to the image. And as I zip through these, we can see that some of them show some difference between the tripod and the, the surrounding area, but none of them has a, a really good mask. And a good mask would be a uh, very white shadow, highly selected shadow, and very little of the brick around it selected. And none of these do that. They all show some difference, but they're just too close. And if I adjust one, I'm gonna adjust both. And that's kind of an issue but we can make a custom luminosity mask. And so for example, if we had the uh, just lights one or regular lights here, let's deconstruct how this preview is created and we'll see how we can actually uh, customize this. So there are three parts to each Lumenzia preview and let's just go through these one by one. So the first is this color, it's a black and white color mixer and this is basically taking the underlying image and just turning it into black and white because of course all luminosity masks are black and white images. They're black and white masks. So we have to remove the color somehow. This is telling Photoshop how to make that conversion. And the beauty of that is we can use that to our advantage. So this is just the default conversion in Lumenzia. It's designed to give a good representation of the different brightnesses in the image, but if we want to be more selective to certain tones, we could, for example, target the blues or kind of these yellow orange colors here. So for example, if we start sliding these different sliders around, we're going to see that we're affecting different parts of the image and we can use that to our advantage. So for example, if I wanted to select these yellows, I could really dial them up and dial down the other sliders in the image. And suddenly I've got a pretty good selection of those yellow highlights. There's a nice clean separation from the blues around it. So that's the sort of thing we can do with color to get more discrimination. And we're gonna use that in a moment here. So let me just reset this and move on to the next piece of the custom preview, which is this curve here. The basic lights one is a, a very simple curve. There's really no adjustment to it. But the basic idea is that we take the black and white that we've created and now we make some adjustments. So for example, if I want to select the highlights in the image, then I can make a curve that helps bring out the highlights. And you can think of this curve as, here are the tones in the image. Here are your shadows, here are your highlights. 
with a full spectrum between them. And the output is going to be how selected those tones are in the mask. So if I want to select my highlights, then the brighter part should be you know, having higher values and the shadow area should be less selected. So I can simply just draw a curve that looks like this and my highlights are very selected. My midtones and shadows are much less so. So this is a highlight selection that's pretty specific and I can customize this in a lot of different ways. I could really bring in a, a range of highlights and tweak things. So for example, this would be a great way to select part of the sky. So there's an infinite range of options here and we can do all this interactively. So I don't have to just manipulate the curve. I can grab this little picker and now I can click and drag to manipulate different parts of the image. So I don't have to understand curves all that well if I just simply use this tool to start manipulating the different parts of this curve. Same thing with the underlying color adjustment here. I don't have to necessarily know which part of the image is which. I can just click and then interactively slide left and right to make things more or less selected in my mask. So that's the basic way that we would adjust color and luminosity or the sensitivity to them. These, these curves can get a little bit more complex in some of the Lumenzia masks. And so I wanted to give you one more way to adjust this. In, so if I want to adjust this entire curve, I don't want to move each of these individual points. And that's why there's a levels adjustment on top. By default, nothing is actually happening in here in Lumenzia. This is only here for you to customize the mask. But it does give you the ability to come in and, for example, move this gamma slider and I can start pushing around the midtones to create, you know, more selection of the midtones or less selection of the midtones. Uh, or I can move the, the clipping of the masks or make sure there's a minimum level of selection. There's all sorts of things I can do with those levels. We won't really play with that, but I just wanted to mention that there's just one more lever that you can pull to customize the preview. So let's close it out and let's get right into how we're going to tackle this tripod. So I want to zoom into it, make sure we've got good visibility of what's going on here. And the way that I want to go about this is I'm going to use the custom zone picker. And by clicking this, I can simply go in and click on a representative tone that I want to pick and hit OK. Lumens is automatically going to try and create a pretty specific selection of that tone. And we can see that the tripod is a little bit more selected than its surroundings, but it's obviously not that differentiated from its surroundings. And the reason is because they do have similar luminosity. It's the difference in color that is drawing the most attention. So what we really need to do is customize this color selectivity, especially in the blue and magenta channels. So if we start to move these around, we can see that pushing magenta to the right is going to help separate out some of that background and now we can play with the blue and see if we can't get a, even more separation. So I'm starting to lose it there. And it's pretty good right in that range. If I keep going, I start to lose that. So I think right in here is probably kind of optimal. And I always like to play with adjacent channels to see if I get any other effect. And cyan's not doing anything. The red's really not doing anything. And yellow's probably not going to either. So all the relevant adjustments in this area are just the blues and the magentas. But we can see that we've already made a pretty big improvement. So if I step back, we had no discrimination, but by making a quick little uh, adjustment here, and let's see, how do we step back here? Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to redo that. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but so if we just quickly come back here, and now we've got this much better separation between the two. And it's definitely still not perfect because there's still quite a bit of selection of these tiles. But now that I've separated them, I can go in to my curve and customize this even further. And this is a place where I like to use this interactive bit so I can see where I'm in the curve. You can see as I'm moving around, there's a little circle that's moving up and down the curve. And I can see that it's kind of the upper down slope of the curve where this is. And this is really in kind of the sweet spot, which you would expect because that's what I selected with the color picker. So it should be pretty much dead center. So all I need to do is just grab the right-hand side of this and start to bring that in. That's gonna help really minimize how much I have selected that particular tone. So I could go and spend a bit of time if I wanted to really make this perfect, 
but I don't think we're gonna have to for this particular mask. And, and you might think it looks a little crazy because there's a lot of details around here that are still selected, but you're not looking for a perfect mask. You're looking for one that's good enough to do the job because the mask is not what you're gonna see in the finished image. The finished image is gonna be much more subtle. So this is actually really good and we can refine this later if we need to. We can always come back and paint black on these areas to knock them out if they're a problem. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna load it up on a curve by just clicking the curve button. And that's gonna create the luminosity mask that we just previewed, that exact custom mask. And we can see, here it is. And now we can start adjusting this curve to make an impact. And I don't like to guess. I like to be pretty precise. I find that's much easier. So if I click on this check luminosity button in Lumenzi, it's gonna give me a preview of just the tonal values in the image because I wanna deal with color and the tone separately. So I'm gonna click here to be able to select things and I can see, all right, this is kind of the point I need to adjust. And if I look at the neighboring values, it looks like 78 is kind of where I need to be. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm just gonna arrow up to 78 and we have knocked that out. Look at, look at what we've done here. This curve has taken the shadow and just wiped out all of that tonal difference. So for a black and white image, we're done. It looks great. Let's clean up these temporary layers. So we still have this color issue, right? Because we've we, all we've done is fix the luminosity problem. We still have a color problem, but this is a, a pretty easy problem to solve. So let's just create a solid color adjustment. And I'm simply gonna hide it for a sec double click and this is the color we want this is all a pretty uniform color so i can just click on any of these color here and hit okay and i'm just going to paint over this so let's go and i'm going to hit command i to invert and i'm going to switch to my paintbrush and i'm loading white paint so i've got a paintbrush right now with white paint and we're just going to paint on this mask with a relatively low flow try and keep things looking pretty real and just bring it right over these areas here. So as we're doing this, we're just simply putting down this purple color over the image. But of course I'm painting pure purple. So this is going to wipe out detail and we'll fix that in a second by changing the blend mode of this layer over to color. Cause all we really want is the color, the luminosity underneath it was fine because the black and white image looked great. So. Just wanna go through here, wipe out any areas that seem to have kind of lingering color effect and change the blend mode of this layer to color. And at this point, things look really, really good. I'm gonna make sure I kind of get this area a little bit better. And now we just have a couple other little adjustments. So if I zoom back, we can see that this luminosity mask selected a lot more than just the tripod. And if I turn this off and on, you can indeed see it's causing problems in other parts of the image. So what we want to do is group this and I'm simply going to select both of these and alt click on group. So this is going to create a new group with a black mask. So essentially everything inside this group is now hidden. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything, but when I paint white on this mask, I'm going to be turning on that adjustment in the area that I paint. So I'm painting this fixed tone and fixed color back into the image, but I'm just limiting it to the areas where we need to make the correction. You know, I could have gone and, and refined the luminosity mask if I wanted to, um, but this is just a, a really simple way of correcting that. So let's zoom in here and see what we've done at this point. So here's where we started and we've now wiped out that shadow, I think that looks great. To me, this is already done. I wouldn't need to go any further. But if you look very closely, some of these little cracks and all are selected. You know, so for example, we are lightening some of these cracks technically. So if we wanted to, you know, that's really subtle. But if we wanted to, we could go through and refine this mask and a, a very easy way of doing that would be just look for something that's gonna select the cracks. So. You know, it looks like zone one does a really good job of selecting those cracks. I'm gonna, again, customize this because I want to make sure it's a pretty bright full selection. And I'm gonna load this up as a selection. I'm gonna command click on selections. It's gonna load as a selection, but the marching ants are hidden. 
but we do have an active selection and we know we have a selection because the selection button is now green and let's visualize I'm just alt clicking on this um, mask now and I'm flipping over to black paint and then when I paint with a black paint here this is going to help knock out some of these cracks here so these areas that are really bright in the cracks I can quickly knock them out and I could go through with you know more of a, a loose brush if I wanted to you know go even further but I'm just trying to get rid of the most egregious adjustments because most of this just isn't really going to show up because even though we see the gray stuff here it's much less selected than the white stuff around it so it's just not really going to matter all that much so you know, again if I wanted to I could keep using some other masks or in this case I'm going to deselect I could even just go in and freehand for example to paint some of that out but I really don't think we need to go any further we've already fixed this and now I would just go over there's a second shadow here from another light and I would follow the exact same process to knock that out as well but you can see in just a few steps we took what would have been a really difficult issue and just made a, a custom mask and then quickly adjusted the tone and color to clean that out. So I hope you found that useful. There's a lot more in the Lumenzia tutorials if you want to learn more on how to uh, customize the masks as well as use some alternative pathways. There's probably about three or four different ways we could have approached this in Lumenzia. Lots of different options, but just want to make sure you're aware of how to use these custom tools because you don't need to use things straight out of the box. I almost never work with a basic default luminosity mask. I usually tweak things to make sure it really suits my image because usually that gives me better results or gives me faster results or does some of both.